there were really three elements in our campaign that made the difference for us. Number one, we actually had a population that was ready and willing to have the conversation about the future. The ground was fertile that we were trying to sow our seeds in, and there were many reasons for that. But one of the reasons that's most germane to you folks today is the fact that there were so many, there are so many organizations in Calgary that are really focused on continuing the civic conversation and on civic engagement uh, overall. And so, for example, uh, we have these Pachakacha nights that, you know, where people come and speak on a common theme, 20 PowerPoint slides, 20 seconds each. And these things regularly sell out four or 500 seat theaters. We have not one, not two, not three, but five TEDx organizations in Calgary. And they are so popular that for most of them, you have to apply to attend the TED lecture. You have to write an essay on why you should go. So we really were working in a community that was very ready and very primed. And a lot of the work that Student Vote and other organizations do really does the work to prime the pump on this stuff, I think. Number two, all of those articles uh, and analyses about my campaign tended to leave out the candidate. I like to think the candidate had something to do with it. A little bit. But what I really mean by that is that it really was the philosophy of how we were managing the election. We called it politics in full sentences. And that line, politics in full sentences, by the way, I thought I had stolen from a uh, successful city council candidate in Edmonton who had run three years prior. He was elected when he, he was, I think, 28 years old, a great guy called Don Iveson. And so I stole his line and after the election, People kept quoting my line all over the national and international media. And I felt bad because I had plagiarized it. So I made sure to say, you know, I stole it from this guy, Don Iveson. You should check out Don Iveson. And he eventually called me and said, okay, two things. Number one, it's not politics in full sentences. It's politics in complete sentences. And I said, great, I improved on it. And then he said, number two, it's not my line. I stole it from the West Wing. So now I have to plagiarize both Don and the West Wing. But what that meant for us was that we really ran a, a platform based on ideas. So every week we released a new portion of our platform. We called it the Better Ideas Campaign. And at the end of the campaign, we had 12 of these better ideas. A better idea would be something like Calgary Transit needs to be the preferred choice, not the last choice for citizens. Or... Political campaigns need to be about ideas, not about money. So we'd have a pithy sentence. We have kind of a one-page overview of the idea, a detailed three or four or five-page background, or usually with footnotes about what it was I was intending on doing, as well as video, a YouTube video and podcast. And we did that every week. And someone pointed out to me towards the end of the campaign that any one of those 12 better ideas contain more words in it than the combined policy platforms of all of my opponents. And people thought this was weird, right? The conventional wisdom was no one will engage at this level of detail. You'll just come off looking like a wonk. And we found just the opposite to be true. There was a, when I made my kickoff, when I made my kickoff speech, this guy just showed up, somebody I didn't know. And he showed up with a handheld video camera and a couple of those little $99 flip cameras that were mounted on C-clamps like you would get at the hardware store. And he asked the volunteers, do you mind if I film this guy's speech? And they didn't know what to do, so they said, oh, all right, go ahead and film it. So this guy filmed it. It turns out that he had, his name is Gordon, and it turns out that Gordon had edited a video of me speaking at one of these TEDx lectures, and he thought it was really interesting. So when he heard that I was making a speech, he just decided to show up and film it. He edited the video overnight. He put it up on YouTube the next day, 14 minutes long. And in the conventional wisdom about the internet, nothing more than two minutes will grab people's attention. Lady Gaga videos, nobody watches past the first two minutes. And I am hardly as visually appealing as Lady Gaga. <laughs> Justin Bieber, maybe. Lady Gaga, no. We'll get back to Justin Bieber. Uh, that's just to keep you listening. So... The video, Lady Gaga, me, no, just me. 
14 minutes long. We actually had more hits on that video than on any of the YouTube videos of any of my candidates. And because we had access to the YouTube analytics, we realized people were watching the whole darn thing from beginning to end. And this made us realize that people really were willing to engage at a much deeper level than we were giving credit for. Which takes us to the third piece. And the third piece is an old political adage. And the old political adage is, go to people where they live. Don't expect them to come to you. Very simple, right? So we did that in a very serious way offline. So every single festival, party, church basement, synagogue, backyard barbecue, living room of people's houses, we were there. We were there continually. Want to know how many debates we did over the course of our mayoral election? Two in the federal election. In our mayoral election, 34. And I went to every single one. So we were really out there. It's funny, my iPhone just rang, and it's the guy I beat running for mayor who's calling. What did I do? He's called me. Hmm. Anyway. We're still friends, believe it or not, because those debates, actually, and this is a key point, because those debates were incredibly respectful. It's not like we made a deal, but we actually said we're going to treat people like adults and we're going to talk to people like they're participants in the decisions that impact them. And it really made a difference.